So we're going to answer some questions which require our knowledge of equivalent trig expressions. So in this first question, we have sine of pi over 5 equals 0 0.5878. And using this fact, they want us to figure out what cos of 3 pi over 10 is. Okay. So first of all, we need to know where is 3 pi over 10. Uh, and if you hide the pi, you get 3 tenths. That means 3 over 10 is between 0 and half. So quadrant 1. And I really don't like the cos because they tell me something about sine. How am I going to use cosine to figure out uh, 3 pi over 10? I can't figure out cos 3 pi over 10. So the first thing I'm going to do is switch it from cosine to sine. How do I do that? Now, because it's in the first quadrant, we have, really, there's no other choice. You're going to use the identity, the co-function identity. You're going to take the complementary angle of 3 pi over 10. So you do pi over 2 minus 3 pi over 10. And the good news is that if you do the math, it's pi over 5. And if it wasn't pi over 5, that would be a problem. Let's say it was pi over 7. Yeah, that's not good because I don't know what uh, sine of pi over 7 is. They didn't tell me that. They told me sine of pi over 5. So that's perfect. So if you didn't get pi over 5, you must have done something wrong. So what it's really saying is cos of 3 pi over 10 is 0 0.5878 a. Because cos of 3 pi over 10 is exactly the same as sine of pi over 5 using our knowledge of equivalent trig expressions. Now let's do cosine of 7 pi over 10. Now 7 pi over 10, hmm, 7 over 10, that's between half and 1, which means 7 pi over 10 is in the second quadrant. So I want to switch it from cosine to sine, so I'm going to write 7 pi over 10 as pi over 2 plus an angle. I already know what this needs to be, but I'm going to do the math anyways. How do I know what this is? You're going to take 7 pi over 10 minus pi over 2. Okay. I only wrote pi over 2 plus because I know 7 pi over 10 is in the second quadrant. So anyways, you do the math, 7 pi over 10 minus pi over 2, what do you know? Pi over 5. It had to be pi over 5 because I'm given this fact here, sine of pi over 5. So if I'm able to rewrite 7 pi over 10 as pi over 2 plus pi over 5, what that's really saying is the reference angle of 7 pi over 10 is complementary to pi over 5. The reference angle of 7 pi over 10 is complementary to pi over 5, which means I can switch this to sine of pi over 5. Oops, sine of pi over 5. But be careful. 7 pi over 10, that's in the second quadrant. If I put, if I change it to sine, no problem, but negative. So cosine of 7 pi over 10 is approximately negative 0 0.5878. So using, using the idea of equivalent trig expressions, I can answer questions like that. Very nice. So another question, I'm given cosecant 2 pi over 7, and I want to find out what secant of 17 pi over 14 is. So secant of 17 pi over 14. So we should ask ourselves, where is 17 pi over 14 located? Where is 17 over 14? Let me help you, because you don't work with 17 over 14 very often. 17 over 14 is 1.21 approximately. So that's between one and one and a half, which means this is in the third quadrant. So if it's in the third quadrant, I'm going to write this as 3 pi over 2 minus an angle. 17 pi over 14 is equal to 3 pi over 2 minus what angle? Okay. I already know the answer because it has to be this, but we'll figure it out. So 3 pi over 2 minus 17 pi over 14, if you do the math, is 2 pi over 7. 
Of course it is, because it's written right here. It better be. I knew it was going to be 2 pi over 7, because what is the math saying here? If 17 pi over 14 is equal to 3 pi over 2 minus 2 pi over 7, that's telling me that the angle, the reference angle of 17 pi over 14 is complementary to 2 pi over 7. It's complementary to 2 pi over 7. Let's draw a diagram, because that would really help us. So if this is 17 pi over 14, okay, and this angle here was 2 pi over 7, that means this angle, the reference angle, is complementary to 2 pi over 7, which means I can switch this from secant to cosecant. But be careful, secant is reciprocal cosine, and cosine is negative in the third quadrant. So this is negative 1.2790. So some students really don't like this way of doing it. They, they, they have a hard time working with angles in the third quadrant. And I give them an alternative. So the alternative is to not work with an angle in the third quadrant. But you need extra steps, okay? So, so what we're gonna do is push into the first quadrant, okay? Forget switching it to the complementary trig function. Keep it as you can. Keep it as you can. So it's in the third quadrant, so you find the reference angle. So if you do the math, 17 pi over 14 minus pi is 3 pi over 14. Now be careful though, 13, sorry, three, uh, quadrant 3, push it to the first quadrant, and it's secant, so it's negative. Now, find the complementary angle of 3 pi over 14, because I want to go from secant to cosecant. That's the fact I've been giving, given. So secant equals, or cosecant of pi over 2 minus 3 pi over 14. So I switch it from secant to cosecant using the co-function identity, find the complementary angle, and of course, you'll get 2 pi over 7. Oops, I don't need the bracket there. Minus uh, 1.2790. So with all these questions, if it's not in the first quadrant, you can push it into the first quadrant and then switch it to, uh, to the complementary trig function using the co-function identity. Uh, but if you feel comfortable doing that in one shot, pushing it to the first quadrant and changing the complementary trig function, then you can do that as well, okay? So I'll leave it up to you which one you prefer. But some students, like I said, really have a hard time with, with uh, doing the two steps in one. All right. Uh, secant B is a cosecant 0 0.64, and B lies in the fourth quadrant. Okay, so cosecant of 0 0.64. So cosecant is 0 0.64. Hmm, where is 0 0.64 located? Well, I'll give you a hint. Pi divided by 2 is 1.57. So 0 0.64 is between 0 radians and 1.57, which means it's in the first quadrant. So it's, it's helpful to know what pi over 2 is and what 3 pi over 2 is. So if I give you a decimal value, you'll know where it is. Okay, so anyways, 0 0.64, I know you don't look at that very often, but that's in the first quadrant. So I want to change it to secant and... I want it to be in the fourth quadrant. So you can do this in two steps or one step. Uh, I'll do the two step way. So first I'm going to change it to secant by taking the complementary angle. And then I can take this angle, okay, this is in the first quadrant, and push it to the fourth quadrant. So this is my reference angle. I'm going to do 2 pi minus all of pi over 2 minus 0 0.64. If you do the math, let's see, that's 3 pi over 2 plus 0 0.64, which is about 
Okay, so that's the two-step way of doing it. The one-step way of doing it is saying, okay, I want to switch it to the complementary trig function, so I want the reference angle to be complementary to 0 0.64. So I'm going to do 3 pi over 2 plus 0 0.64. And I'm allowed to, I don't have to put a negative because secant is reciprocal cosine and cosine of the fourth quadrant is positive. So either way, you'll get the same thing. B is approximately 5.35 radians. Okay. Last one here. Cosecant B, negative secant 3 pi over 5. So let's work with negative secant of 3 pi over 5. To be honest with you, I'm not that fond of that negative sign. And I know that 3 pi over 5 is in the second quadrant. And secant is negative second quadrant. So I can just deal with that. I'm going to push that in the first quadrant. So that's going to be reference angles 2 pi over 5. I like this question a lot better now. So now I'm in the first quadrant, and that negative sign is gone. So I want to switch it to cosecant, and I want angle B to be in the second quadrant. I want the angle to be in the second quadrant. So secant is reciprocal cos, and I want to switch it to cosecant. So it's cosecant, and I want the reference angle to be complementary to pi over 5. So it's going to be pi over 2 plus 2 pi over 5. If you're having trouble with that, just draw the diagram. So this is pi over 2 plus 2 pi over 5, which means this angle here is 2 pi over 5, which means this angle here is complementary to 2 pi over 5. And I don't need to add a negative sign because I push the second quadrant where cosecant is positive. Okay, so we figure out what pi over 2 plus 2 pi over 5 is, and then we're done. So that's going to be 5 pi plus 4 pi is 9 pi over 10. So let's just summarize this. Uh, take care of the negative because uh, you push the second quadrant angle to the first quadrant. Uh, and this is reciprocal cosine. Uh, and then, once I have secant of 2 pi over 5, I want to go back to the second quadrant. And I want to uh, take the complementary angle. So, it should be pi over 2 plus 2 pi over 5. I know it seems strange, because you usually don't want to work with the, y, the, axis, the angle between the y-axis and the terminal arm. But in this case, you do, because you want the complementary angle. So you want it to be pi over 2 plus 2 pi over 5. And if you did have a calculator, you can easily check this. Find out what cos, cos secant 9 pi over 10 is and negative secant of 3 pi over 5.